you know what I want to do? I want to do the mix between poetry mm-hmm. and photography. I have the perfect recipe. I've do been you? Try, I've been, yeah, for years I've been saying this to my buddies, uh, is I want to put all those photos from my Instagram and just scroll through them. Yep. And, uh, like, have a big projector. Okay. Being, like, a setting like this is perfect. I like, your brick and the wood, like you said, and, like, the lights. Yeah. And some, you know, get some some liquor or whatever you fucking want and just sit there and, like, have a cabin for, like, a week and just, like, pick little certain things from each photo. <laughs> Welcome to the Superhero Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Archangel. Steve, you just got here. I've known you for how long now? Since why simply because days? I mean, it's been a minute. It's been... 10 years? 11 years? 10 or 11 years. Yeah, Yeah, 10 or 11 years. So Steve here is an amazing photographer. Somebody who I I feel just doing stunning work. Uh, I love that you've just I love that you just go out and take pictures. What I do, but like, but not only as a gig. See, I, I kind of no. did it as like more of like a like you know what I mean. Like I love photography. I love mm-hmm. photography for my own self. But I kind of do it when I'm like traveling or doing whatever. But I love that you just go out in Montreal on like a on a Tuesday and just go and take pictures. It's fun. Yeah, it's so fun. I've yeah. been doing it for a long time. I've been no doing kidding. that exact thing for a long time. Yeah, well, before you yeah. get to this, tell me that yeah. story in a second. Yeah. What I want to do is I want to show your Instagram a little bit. Oh, because, yes. Um, I mean, look, you've, you've got stunning photos. You've got really beautiful stuff. This is, this is obviously a lot of, uh, of, of uh, fall feels right now because, it, you know, we're uh, pandemic 2020 uh, timeline right here. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, I mean, tell me the journey that you've had in terms of photography, like, you know, where where did you start? How did you first pick up a camera? How did you know that this is what you wanted to I do? I first picked it up. Um, I was skateboarding a lot, mm-hmm. trying to make like sponsor me tapes. Uh, not far from here, actually, Square Vic area. Oh, nice! And I busted my ankle real bad <laughs> in like that one, like beginning of summer kind of feel, kind of feeling. And um, mm-hmm. picked up a camera, uh, started filming first, and then I started shooting just like stills where I would s- or I'd freeze frame and then use that as like a still kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so I did that, got in luckily, three years of the program. Um, completed it, passed. After that, I was like, uh, I'm done with photography for a bit. Like, I kept shooting, but, like, the commercial side of it didn't do it for me kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So uh, I did music for, for a few years, um, always still shooting, still, like, refining my craft, refining my eye, um, doing, like, just going out and shooting kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until, like, five years ago I started to – well, I was working, like, a soul-sucking nine-to-fiver while shooting, of course. Mm-hmm. And um, – yeah, I just made the made the uh, made the leap, and it's five years ago now. Like, pretty much, I think I posted something today on my Instagram where it was like, "I'm still at this fucking like, office. I need to get out of here," kind of thing. <laughs> wow! And I yeah, yeah, made it happen. But yeah, that's it. So for those who don't know, we're both Montreal based, right? Yeah. Um, you've been so you've been doing ph- photography full time for five years. Yeah. What would you say you specialize in? I know the answer, but for those who aren't listening. Man, the last three years would be food mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. It's been most of my income is food photography. Um, but I, I love, like I specialize in nature, landscapes, travel, I'd say. Yeah. Just like spontaneity, the t- like being topical. Even just photojournalism, I'm, like you said, like I'll go out and shoot mm-hmm. and like I, I, I come back with, with imagery, you know, mm-hmm. good imagery, so. I'd say just like the topical photojournalism, kind of travel on the spot, making things look nice. Mm. I'd say that. But, I mean, in terms of like my, my gigs recently, the last few years has been food. food. Yeah. A lot of food. Yeah. A lot. A l- <laughs> we were right before this, we were ordering at Uber Eats, and then you asked me what restaurant I'm ordering from mm. because the, the likelihood that I <laughs> you it's literally high. shot the pictures that I was looking at is very high. It's very high. Yeah, yeah. very, very, very high. That's I that's I find that amazing. I find it amazing that there's so many there's like way more photography gigs than I than I can like think of. Cuz I did 
I did mainly video, mm -hmm. but I was doing a lot of video in the wedding space for a while. Yep. And that's kind of how I learned video and yep. then started doing it more for my own brand. Hence all the camera gear and all this crazy mm -hmm. stuff that we're using over here. Mm -hmm. That's basically how I learned it. But um, I'm imagining that most of your work has really been through trial and error, yep. going out there, YouTube University, like that kind of stuff. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's easy to learn nowadays with, like you said, YouTube University. You can just you can find so many people. Instagram, obviously, too. You just go lying in bed and you're like, oh my god, how do they do this? Who's doing this? Wh how are they doing that? And you just like sort of, and then you go out and you do it. Yeah. You know. So. So who's a photographer that inspires you? Like wh who's somebody that every time you see their work, you're like, damn, I wish I was half as good. I look up to the Montreal Gazette photographers a lot. I've always, I always have. When I was like young, that was my thing. What I wanted to do was like, cause like I always like my dad would always get the, my uh, my grandfather was a delivery man, oh, and, the, uh, the newspaper the, delivery man, the Gazette. Wow. And my my dad always got the paper in the morning, and I would always read it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like once he was done, I would I would take it and I always look at the front picture. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> Who did it? <laughs> What is the context? You know, I was always like enamored by that. So interesting. Yeah, I, I always, I always look up to. I mean, I know all the Montreal Gazette photographers, but like, shout out to them. But um, yeah, I'd say those guys, mm. just because they've been they've been in it for a while, and like I said, to make up an go out every day and make a, a solid image of of something topical, is a skill, man. That's a skill. It's a real skill to do that exactly. Like you said, I think it's the everyday part of it. Yeah, because it's like. There's so many different angles that you could take. There's so many ways that you can communicate a story, but yeah. to get the cover of the Gazette on, yeah. a, on a regular basis or yeah. to get like the store, the headline cover of whatever the, the photo That's that exciting. is needed, Excites me. it could be very exciting. Yeah. It could be, I can imagine it's very stressful. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I know that from like, you know, shooting a wedding. It's like, mm. you can't, you can't, you can't miss the moment. You can't I love miss the it. Kiss. I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I, I feel stressed from it as much as I feel like alive. Yeah. It kind of pumps me up, kind of gets me going. Mm. Yeah. As opposed to being stressed and like worrisome and like, yeah, you know, like I'm not fumbling stuff. I'm like fucking zoned in, like you know. Are you are you like a Zen photographer in the sense that, and it, you strike me as such. I've seen you take photos, but um, would you say that you're like so? Some photographers are just like, and then they're just like click 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 yeah. like high high shutter speed, mm -hmm. constant like tr try and shoot everything and then maybe sort it later and like maybe get a whatever. Yeah. You strike me as more like the guy who like knows the shot. Like you're like, okay, I'm looking for this specific thing. Kind of. I remember, I remember you showed me like, uh, I asked you, I'm like, how the hell did you get the moon behind like with the with the Champlain Bridge? Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, this is the app, and mm -hmm. you knew exactly where the moon was gonna yeah, line up, exactly where you had to stand to get a shot. I thought about that shot on the way here. That's so funny. I, yeah. I looked at the bridge behind me. I'm like, oh man, that was <laughs> such a fun time. But it was so it was that was stressful though because yeah. The app fucking didn't work properly because it had me going here <laughs> when it should have been back there. So I instead of like I was on the the highway, the expressway Bonaventure, and I couldn't reverse on it. Yeah. So I had to run with my tripod and camera and get to a spot and like set up and I got it. But I find it I find it interesting that you 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 knew you wanted to take that shot though. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess this new bridge it's was sick it? looking. Was it like a super moon or yeah, something yeah. like that? It was like photos. a super moon. It was I definitely full a full moon. It, it, it's on pull there. It. Yeah, yeah, actually. It's, it's on there. It's not far. It's not too far. Yeah. I sent it to the news. They didn't put it up. Lori, Lori Graham was off that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's find Let's find this photo. There it no, is. Yeah, I, it's I, there. I like taking pictures of moon rises, you know, when it's coming straight out of the horizon and it's still red. Yeah, it was like that. It's beautiful, but I have one where it's that's for Instagram, and I hate Instagram because of the I know the crop and the, the oh factor. man, yeah. everyone shoots photos now, yeah. vertically. Yes, but our eyes are like this, not like this. I, so that's why it's very bizarre to me. I hate, I really dislike vertical. I found myself going out and shooting like that, and I was they, nowadays just to please Instagram. To please Instagram, which is sick. Yeah, I'm I okay like with it. four by five a little bit more. Mm. But even then, I, I just prefer. I don't love it. I don't love it either. Don't love it, particularly in video. Like no. I think in photography, I'm okay with video needs to more. be flattened even more. Yeah, but video drives me like a absolutely long rectangle. wild. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like even like, 
like I don't know uh, some of the like when I hand somebody a phone I'm like hey film a little something and then mm. they're they're filming but they're filming for so far they get like my whole like all my feet and everything and it's like there's no detail no. in that it just feels like no. flat no I don't particularly like on cell phones like cell phone photography is like you know everyone's like oh the best phone the best camera is the one you have on you mm. okay great cell phones are great but they're not DSLRs they're not and and it just I don't know there's something that we we've like it's almost like we're we're flooding the market with too much photo and too much like bad photo, but with like some uh, decent photo with like portrait mode and some of these things, but we then we don't appreciate absolutely what it takes for you to get that shot. For example, that's a lot of, like that's a lot of thought, and I and I find it really 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 interesting that you like you're like hey this is my night my night is I'm gonna go and hang out I'm gonna wait for this time I'm gonna look mm. at this app and I'm gonna go take a picture of this bridge. That was it. The app is called Photo Pills. Shout out to Photo Pills. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll include that for sure. App. But I mean. Where do you think that comes from? Like seriously, where where do you think you taking the time to just go and do that? I just because mainly life, you're man. going alone. I'm assuming too, or it sometimes with a friend. Yeah, sometimes with a friend. Sometimes alone. Mostly alone. I shoot mostly alone. I don't yeah. shoot much with other photographers. I know there's like clicks and crews and all that stuff, but I I, I tend to I like the the solitude of it most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I just love life. I think shit is so crazy <laughs> that it's like how could you not? Mm. want to like just capture it capture it and beautify it yeah and going alone you get to go really at your own pace and you don't need to yeah it's like meditative at, at, yeah exactly you know I, li I like i like i started meditating this year hmm. wild world you think it's improved your photography yeah like do you think you it, like i was saying earlier do you think you snap less and oh yeah wait more 100 uh -huh. I have a shot in mind, like and like I'll sh I'll take five photos in, in like one day, like five it. shots. <laughs> that's it. And then it. you go home and you edit. And I got one or two good ones. And you, is there, are you are you a Lightroom editor? I use Camera Raw. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't. I've never used Lightroom in my life. I, I, but I'm more comfortable with Camera Raw than I yeah. am with Lightroom. It's the same thing. I think. It basically is the same thing I at just, this point. But if it was the same thing, why would I move from Camera Raw? I, I use Camera Raw in like when I was in school mm -hmm. in Dawson. Mm -hmm. I think. I think how much did. are you? How much are you photoshopping things, um, and like removing blemishes or removing s people? Or not too much. Like everything you see on my Instagram, pretty much mm -hmm. takes me under four minutes per photo to, to edit. Yeah, and that's a four lot. Four hours to get the shot, but four four yeah. minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that burn shot took like two years because I just couldn't get the right light. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, I'm I'm fast fast. I'm, I'm like, the more I really look at your photos, the more I'm deeply impressed by your talent. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. I find I, I'm, you know, and I would love to ask you this question, but you know, for me, the, the, you know, I always think, what is, what is the why? Like what motivates someone to do their art or their craft? Right. And mm -hmm. so in your case, your art is photography mm -hmm. and my craft, my art is slightly different. I would say it's storytelling. And so photography is a part of that, mm -hmm. but so is like color and branding and websites and video and, yeah. and podcasts, right? Because I love the idea of storytelling. And I find that what motivates my storytelling mm. is nostalgia. I would imagine that being a photographer has a, and, and like very specifically a photographer, or very focused on photography, not that you don't do other stuff too, but, um, has a, an element of that that's there for you too like there's a nostalgia to the moment that you're capturing there's a nostalgia to it for me it's the nostalgia of my journey mm. like what oh what was i experiencing and then like the transportation that it brings me to and i feel like i i smoked way too much weed and lost way too many of my memories of like high school and all these things that i don't ever want to have that, that happen again one of the main reasons i yeah. shoot so much too for sure <laughs> i don't remember much from when i was a kid Mm. which sucks but i have a lot of photos mm. but i mean from that point in my life i wasn't shooting too much but yeah no memories no memories did you have like a dad or somebody in your life that was taking a ton of photos no my mom's very artsy sorry my mom is very artsy i think i got it from her for sure my dad's like the athletic type okay this the sports kind of guy yeah he trains um but no i got my i'm sure i got my art from my mom 100 percent. yeah i think back to like early birthdays um and like family moments and like trips when yeah. i would go with my 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 
um, my parents or whatever it was, and um, and just all the th- times that my dad would bust out like a like a like one of those cameras, yeah, those yeah. camcorders, and just film. And I I remember feeling like super embarrassed, or I remember being like, why, you know, like like mad about it in mm-hmm. certain moments. And now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, I wish I would have encouraged him. Like I wish I understand why he was doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I really understand. Um, and it just feels like life is it's this fleeting moment at all times. And I'm just getting older and older. Yeah. I feel like I'm so old. I'm 32, yeah. but I feel like I'm way older than that. Me and, too, and man. I, I feel, feel like, old what? as hell. I feel old as hell. Like, especially recently, especially if I'm not, like, I'm not, like, I haven't been training since COVID. I just feel old, man. It's not cool. But again, w- what you said about nostalgia, I had to bring that back. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I'm like I have friends who are really great storytellers. Like you could just sit down and they could tell you the craziest story. And like the story is so sick and the way they recount it is so dope. Mm-hmm. And I suck at that, I feel. Mm. And I was like back in the day I was always like trying to write like song right and I felt like I was shit at it and like it just you know, so but with photos I can nail it. Like it's like easier for me. So I guess that's why I do it a lot too. It's just it's it's your easy way. it's easier for me to tell a story with a photo and I get my point across better, faster. E- is easier than me trying to, you know, like write it or even like note form and then say it. So it's just not your. It's just not your jam. Yeah. It's it's, it's uh, the those other formats of telling stories is not the thing that you're yeah. you're diving deep on. You're diving deep on your capacity to take yeah. amazing photos. Which is annoying because I love writing. <laughs> you know, I love writing. I love a good song, man. I love a good song. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you can spend more time. To, I mean, the captions is a lot. You know what Captions I mean? Is a lot. I, I Instagram stories. Most of what I'm doing on Instagram stories is storytelling from the perspective yeah, of writing. Yeah. I'm, I have I like mini blogs it. in my st- my Instagram stories is like a mini blog. I love reading your Instagram stories. I get that a lot. I love it. I have a lot of really, um, I have a good to like read through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people that get like their first story has like a lot, and then you know the second and mm. third, and it kind of goes down. Yeah. I mean, I we all have that to some degree, but mine kind of really flows through. Like the I people like get it. through are all are lots of the same people, or you know, recurring people on a regular basis. They and they get through everything. You talk to facts. Am I? I so. <laughs> my facts, my fact, I my truth. I can relate to your facts. That's all. That's fair. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm talking. Well, yeah, I'm talking truth, and I'm not afraid to say what I what I'm I'm yeah. bringing forward. And I think I've what I've like been able to tap into more lately mm. is uh, the vulnerability and authenticity side of like the journey of what it feels like to be me. Yeah. Right. More so than like the highlight reel. Yeah. I think it was like better at the highlight reel stuff for a long time. Mm. And then I had like, like social media on autopilot from the perspective of like memes going out and like, no, 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 here's a meme that somebody made that mm. I paid them to do this much. And then I paid somebody else to post it. And then, you know, like my presence was there, but it was not really me. Mm. Like it was part of me. It was, it was like, a, it was vetted by me in a way, or it was like kind of in my voice in a sense, but it wasn't me. Do you think that has something to do with your training and like, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think right now my stories are definitely yeah. more vulnerable. It, yeah. It's because of a few things. One, I shifted my number one priority mm. from being business to being love and intimacy. And so in and of itself, a shift to intimacy means I'm going to be more vulnerable. Yeah. And then in that comes like all these other things, like I'm reading more poetry or I wake up in the middle of the night and I used to like turn on, like just watch YouTube. Mm. I still do that from time to time, but now I'm like, no, let me like sit and write. Mm-hmm. Like, let me like write a thought. Yeah. And then, and now that I'm valuing and that I even like gave myself the title of storyteller, which is like, you know, one of my official titles on whatever, uh, Google, <laughs> let's say, is is I actually like value sitting down and saying, okay, I'm going to tell a story today. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know where it's going to go, exactly how I'm going to go through it, but at least this is like a little arc that I'm going to yeah, create. it's so fun. And I think about it. I Like I really put a lot of thought into it. And then it takes me like, like one of like the story I did today, the little like, yeah. you know, workout routine. And mm-hmm. I guess yesterday's story was like me talking and ranting about how the world is going to go to, to, there's going to be further lockdowns and other things, uh, which I don't have to get into right now. But the point is that, like, the it took me, like, 45 minutes to make that little sure. two-minute story. Sure. You know what I mean? How like, long did it take to write a book? Yeah. Long. And then, and then I'm thinking, long. like, okay, what, like, color profile do I want here? And I feel limited by Instagram, mm. definitely. Mm. Specifically, 
I feel like I, I need to like learn more about the video side of, of like um, phone editing, but it annoys me. I'm just not into it. Yeah, um, I can see how that. Yeah. Can yeah. And, and, and the other thing is I'm not filming at all. So it's like the visuals of my stories aren't as great um, compared to what I would like. Mm -hmm. I generally tell them where to stand or like, I like, hey, take this angle or try yeah. that thing. But it's not necessarily framed the way I would like to. So there's a part of me that's like a little annoyed of that. Um, but then the other thing is, um, for me, what's really interesting about the storytelling piece now is um, I hate doing things that are short term. I hate like investing in Instagram stories because they die. Yeah. Like they're just, they're gone in 24 hours. Yeah. I can make little highlights, but yeah. nobody really watch or some people watch those, but it's, it's rare. Mm -hmm. And so I find, um, I have to get over that. Like it's part of my healing to not over perfect things. Makes sense. Because that's, that's the thing. That's where I get lost in videography and photography Yeah, is that I shoot a ton. I know. I come back from some trip and I never edit and I never, I never do anything. Overwhelming. With it. Massively overwhelming. But I've come now to come to every trip that I'll take mm -hmm. or every like little story I want to tell. I'm going to tell in a series of three, six, or nine photos. Nice. And I try and put a video right in the middle. Yeah. And so that's, that's my like, idea. yeah. So if you look at like my Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll just pull it up here real fast, right? Um, my Instagram is, is like this last story. These are nine images are all taken okay. on the same trip and there's a video in the middle. Oh, that's cool. That's a yeah. good idea. That's a good way to sort of segment it. Exactly. And then I have like a little bit of like some of these yep. are just kind of keeping the same thing. Mm -hmm. But then I have like another story and this is me in Madagascar. Video in the middle again, you know, photos on the edge that all kind of tell that story. Now in this one, I went to a place called Time and Tide. Mm. So I tried to do, I did eight boomerangs because I, I was like, oh, what's a cool concept for Time and Tide? And the, the Time and Tide is that the tide comes in and out. Yep. Like just like I was just thinking about like the thing, mm -hmm. everything is there is like pale blue, you know, like yeah. like turquoise water, that kind of vibe. And so I was like, oh, the boomerang like loop yeah. is exactly what I want to create with my my. You don't stuff. see boomerangs these days. You don't see right? boomerangs these days. They're kind of like yeah, they've I'm gone okay away. Everyone's okay posting reels now. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with no. I saw a real. Bo too. I saw a guy shooting a real boomerang the other day, and I wanted to ask him to try it so bad. <laughs> so <laughs> like bad. A, a like physical a real boomerang. one, and he was getting it. He was good. He was getting it. It didn't look that hard. Who the hell invented a boomerang? Like, uh, Australian, natives. yeah, Aborigines? yeah, natives in uh, in Australia. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. They were, it was actually to kill kangaroos. Unreal. Uh, I would love to see that happen. <laughs> if, if it's like real, if, like done. If it comes back, the kangaroo is dead. Uh, the, if it d comes back, the kangaroo is not dead. Yeah. If it doesn't come back, then you have dinner for a week. Man. Wild. I would love to see like an original. Original. Yeah, I've got a boomerang over there, but it's definitely not original. Mm. <laughs> definitely far from uh, from uh, you know the the what the what the natives in in Australia were using for sure. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, I th I find that like I love people's amazing talents. I love that people have superpowers that they just spend yeah. hours and hours and hours you know finding. And yeah. and what is it about like what it, what are you looking for when you're like when you're putting the lens and you know the, the camera to your eye? First of all, you're for those who don't know, what do you shoot? Camera? Yeah. Camera, oh. lens. What, what do you do? Mark oil three. Oil? Yeah. I bought yeah, a Mark three man. off uh, off some dude in the Tim Hortons in Brossard. That's the one I use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> off Kijiji. Yeah. Think about getting a, a new body, maybe. Which one are you, are you going for? Are you going to mirror? I don't know, man. I don't know. Just I'm not like techie. Man. I don't know. I don't know what's best. I'm going to ask tech people mm. to like judge me and then see what I should get. I don't know. I have a backup Mark II, and I just have like a bunch of different lenses. Hmm. I'm surprised you don't you don't have like a dream camera that you're already gunning uh, for. I'm doing what I do with what I have now, so I don't I don't know unless it's like a cool. I mean, yeah, all my stuff's going to Instagram. Like I'm, but you're so nonchalant about it. I love that. I'm not printing many pr like big prints these days, you know. So I don't need a huge 50 megapixel. It's unnecessary. And this lenses are clutch for sure. Yeah. Like if I, like my my trip lens, what I take is just like my 14, 24, 24, 70, 7200, or I leave the 7200 and I take the 150, 600, and I'm just like a backpack with my laptop, and that's it, mm. and one one body. A little hard drive, and that's that. Yeah, small little two terabyte thing, and that's it. You do you put um, uh, filters on it on the front of your lenses? Any of those things? Mm, not really. Um, you keep it au naturel. Yeah, oh, that's real. You can fake that these days. I yeah. mean, you know, it's so easy to fake it. So, totally. Unless you, I mean, 
and you video really has need a it. little bit of a more of an impact. But yes. Yeah. Yes. When I was, I did a bit of video in Dominican, and uh, I was using a filter. I had to buy one there because I didn't have one. Yeah. Uh, to I remove the glare it specifically, because Dominican is like everything is shining at you. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Twelve stop ND, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Polarizers are good though. I always keep polarizer in my bag, mm -hmm. but I don't use it too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. My gear. I'm not a gear guy. Yeah. You know? Where was I going before this? So I asked you what gear, but then I was gonna say something. Yeah, that. Damn. <laughs> See, this let's is where you need a little playback. Push a replay over here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have. I have a question because you guys were talking about you know your art as a f as a storyteller and your art as a photographer. Yeah. And I'm wondering if ever you feel like you're kind of continuing it just because that's what's expected of you, right? So you were saying originally, mm. so to just to give like some, mm. some context as to why I ask is, you know, Mark was saying that he was feeling weird about his photos or his video work, and then now he's getting into the storytelling work, and then is there the possibility that that enters the same or a similar pattern moving forward in, you know, six months' time or even two years' time or whatever it Where is. Where I'm, like, tired of photography or tired yeah, of video. Or, or, or tired of, of doing your Instagram stories the way that you're doing them and you feel like you're doing them just because others are getting value from it. Yeah, that's right. a great question. I'm, I'm not tired yet. Um, I have been wanting to do video for a long time, but I have so many talented friends that do video, and I'm just like, can you do this better than I would for now? And I can just, like keep shooting stills because I'm comfy, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely doing it because I'm comfy more than, than anything, I'd say. Um, but no, I still I still love it so much that I don't think, like, especially now that I can make a living from it, like, kind of kind of validates what I was doing for so long, you know? Yeah, what well you were spending time doing for mm. years as a more so of a long. hobby. Yeah. 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 It was definitely a hobby, but like, I don't know, something there, there was something like, yeah, you know, something that keeps going. I could say that I'd get tired of social media, in general, I am sometimes tired of that. I'm not super tired of making Instagram stories right now because I only do them when mm. I really want to. Yeah. So you could tell. I've removed the strategy out of it. Mm. Like, there's still strategy in, like, my business in some ways. Like, I'm, look, at the end of the day, I still I'm, – I'm doing certain things with have that has some baked-in strategy yeah. thought through. Mm -hmm. Thumbnails, the way that I'm titling things, the way that I'm doing certain things. Like, I understand what it takes to get attention – and so I'm going to do those things because I'm not making my art and not and not having um, not giving an honest effort to get attention for it. Yeah. But I'm not doing my art for attention. That's different. Yeah. So it's like my my thought of I used to care so much about the numbers. Like, oh, am I growing? Is this mm -hmm. how many people are watching? Is it going to lead to this? Makes maybe, sense. maybe I'll get more speaking gigs or I don't know. Yeah. Right. And now I'm just like, no, I just want to care about, I, I really want like a thousand true fans. I really want a thousand people who just like really follow my story and who care about my story. And I have deep impact on that. And I know that I do. Like I know, yeah. I see who watches my stories. You know what I mean? Like I pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I pay attention to, um, it's, it's not like a, a number thing. It's more like who's, who's watching? Yeah. Like who's like, you know what I mean? Like who am I speaking to? Who's, who's my audience right now? And so I'm noticing like at this moment, I don't think it's, you know, it's a, a normal thing. Definitely have a lot of women paying attention mm. um, just because of working out and I think of being more vulnerable. Mm. So in that vulnerability, I think it's really refreshing for many women to see content coming from men that is speaking into that vulnerability. Absolutely, man. You know what I mean? But then also still holding some strong masculine kind of like mm -hmm. pillar and vibe. Like, you know, when I'm working out, it's very masculine content, but yeah. then I share kind of a more vulnerable thought with the image of me working out or a more vulnerable thought of like something before after That's that. It's a good story. juxtaposition. Exactly. It is. So it's the range I think um, that is keeping me excited about it. Yeah. Am I going to get tired of social media? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to get tired of social media in some ways. I'm already tired of, I'm kind of like over Instagram. Yeah. Uh, the one that I care about the most of the place that I consume the most content is YouTube. Yeah. Like I just am absolute. I'm a, I'm a, yeah. Well now I have the Roku box. Eh? So, the Roku and then you got the YouTube and I just yeah I just live on YouTube live in the van life have you seen that guy van life the van yeah, life stuff I am obsessed with that kind of stuff right Chad now. the road trip. <laughs> literally looking at road trip uh, videos on on YouTube dude this guy lives in his Winnebago mm. Vanagon he like jacked it up put the solid tires on it and he he's his videos are amazing wow 
watch him. Cool. I feel yeah, send me send, send me the link. You. Yeah. It's I feel like I feel like you're I feel like you are like you have to get a van at some point and do it. I have an outback. That's all I need right now. That's fair. But yeah. I have an outback. You can, and I'm you can get one of those trailers, right? The teardrop trailers that you pull and Yeah, and I went I went to room. get a hitch installed the other day. I cleaned the tire. There's like, uh, we gotta take your bumper. It's like up in the thing. I'm like, we gotta take your bumper off. I'm like, there's a wrap on the car, you can't do that. Mm. So I'm like, the fucking told me. But my buddy said there's a place where they put custom uh hitches on. Okay. I'm gonna get that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm I got the Luno Life, it's like a, it's like a mattress that you s- put in the car. You push the seats forward, you blow up a little square, and it fills up that gap, so you can fit like two six foot four guys and comfy in there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I've slept in one of those. Yeah, or on one of those. I would like a Mercedes Sprinter for sure. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, and the fun part behind the van life thing is that if you're gonna build it yourself, yeah. you get this like ability to build what you like right this absolutely like, hey, do you want to like focus on the lighting because you're a photographer do you want to be able to like build some sort of like tripod i will do that like, for sure you know, before i buy a house yeah if i ever buy a house but that's for sure i'm definitely doing that yeah i need you like i did it once i did uh, i did bc to arizona in two weeks like five thousand miles and uh or however many, many miles it was it felt like that oh. and it was the best time i slept in a rav4 I was by myself mm. with that sort of lens combination. And it was amazing. It was and just like doing f- doing photography over and over and over again, like just spending time. Yeah, and just like not really having a plan, not <coughs> like having like I would Google cool spots around that area or what I wanted to shoot or just see what I saw and like, and that was it. And, and then I put a I made a blog post um, about that and just to show the amount of of shots or work I can do or get in like a two week span. Just mm. like if someone wanted to, like, if clients wanted to see, like, my capabilities or something. I'd love to see a little bit more of your behind-the-scene thoughts on, like, mm. when you're when you're setting up a shoot. You know what I mean? Like, you're you're really good at sharing. I, I love that you do this, too, and that's yeah. why I, I thought you were motivated by nostalgia to some degree, too. Mm-hmm. Is you're really good at, like, going through your Instagram, like, uh, or whatever, your Facebook um, timeline, like, the... Uh, and memories yes and I then just bringing forward like oh that time i went to this place and took that shot and did this thing i yes, love that i yeah. love that you're doing i love that. that how they how they remind me do that yeah it's That's a great so feature cool. of facebook it's yeah an amazing feature of facebook and social media i will yeah. say that um and i'm, su- I'm surprised they don't do it more on instagram to be honest it's like, like one me- it's like one memory yeah of that day sure but it's like it would be i would it would be cooler to see a little bit more of like yeah. a spread on instagram yeah um but the the thought of like um you sharing like like for example you're doing these photo shoots at at uh you know one of the restaurants and you're doing this food photography Mm -hmm. i think it's super interesting to like know how you're laying that out and like what your thoughts are and the lighting and different things like i would love to see i was thinking of doing that um but just like me watching that youtube dude and like how he films himself so i i want to do if i do it i want to do it properly so like i don't know if i get like a little osmo and use my phone to do it kind of thing behind the scenes but i definitely want to do it like when i when I take my trip uh, across Canada, I definitely want to do that. I'm going to have a, a guy filming uh, most of it for sure. But, yeah, the, the plan is to have a lot more behind the scenes, kind of like how I do my stuff kind of thing. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. And so when, it, when you're going to film, like, so you guys are going off on, on this cross Canada tour, what do you think, what is the goal for you to film? Like, what would you want to capture? I would film, I would, like, um, not copy. I would pretty much copy living in a van life, how he films his stuff, man. It's so cool. And he's all alone, like, and he drives his car, but has his drone flying up there. And I guess he has on, like, follow me mode. And it's just, mm-hmm. dude, some of the f- scenes, are, I'm like, how is he doing this? <laughs> and, like, the road, I'm like, it's crazy. So, like, more like that, like. You ever watch, like, Casey Neistat? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Casey, Casey's the king at, like, mm. setting context, right? Yeah. So, he's, like this scene, then moves the camera, then this scene, then closes the door, then this scene that he's in the car, then, like, he's so good at, like, he for him to, like, just get in his car, yeah. drive down the road, it was, like, an hour-long yeah. event. but I love, he, I love, like, I that. love uh, Les Stroud, like, Survivor yeah. Man, you know, that, yep. that was, like, this, the, he started a lot of this kind of stuff, yep. in terms of, like, being alone and filming alone, but I, f- I don't know, I, f- I just always just felt like it was so intense for mm. me, like, to do that i don't know it's like it's it's a lot on your plate to do that and like the editing after like it my brain doesn't sometimes work that fast i feel like it's just a lot like it's overload kind of thing mm-hmm. so i mean maybe if it's just juxt- juxt- does he talk to the camera and this this living van guy oh yeah 
Yeah. Oh yeah. So he's like sharing his experience. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's and then he's just kind of telling you it in different scenes or in different acts of sorts. Like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna do this today. Then he shows you like main the thing process is he of just, getting there. And he that just kind of thing. films himself going to awesome locations in in the, the wilderness and filming um, filming and uh, cooking a dope meal over the fire kind of thing. So that's pretty much it. So every time it's I'm here, I'm going there, and then it gets there, and you have the payoff of yeah, sick he cooks meal. over a fire. That's a great formula. It really is. <laughs> I've, I've been just inhaling all those videos. I know people who run big van life Instagram accounts. Really? Yeah. Yep. I know van life Montreal is located not far from where I live. So the one of the guys who was working at van life Montreal has his tiny house or his bus mm. schoolie at our farm. Really? Yeah. He's living there now. He's doing a, he's doing a conversion now of a sprinter or mm -hmm. like something similar, a Dodge Ram or whatever, or not Ram, but the Dodge yeah. whatever. And um, Promaster. Promaster, sure, uh, something like that. One of those, one of those vehicles, mm -hmm. and then, um, but yeah, he he was working there for a few for a few months or not a few years. So cool, man! Yeah. And I, I think COVID is going to make so much more. It's going to explode that industry. I can imagine that, like, it already for sure grew this season. Oh yeah, but now, now, like, if we go through the lockdown yeah. through the winter, yeah. there's no way. That we're not going to see a ton of people paying attention to that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, going it's forward. so exciting. Yeah, just I yeah. can't. I, get, you, I can't. Oh, so you got go to ahead. see it as well, um, like going to Gaspé Z. So yeah. for those of, of us, I guess Quebecers who ended up trying to travel it. during you know COVID and the first lockdown, you go to Gaspé Z and you just saw so many vans. Yeah, and it's like for sure that industry just like took flight. I went on the northern trail. I did. Uh, I did the. Sorry, I did the Cote Nord. Like the other side of the river, yeah, the, the side that nobody goes to, the side that nobody goes to, <laughs> and I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. Mm. I loved it. I have a, <laughs> like you said before, I have a ton of photos I just haven't even touched yet from the trip, mm -hmm. which is annoying because usually I'm like on point and like if I do something, I kind of put it out right away. Yeah, I find the longer you wait, it's like a missing person's. You know what I mean? That's like yeah. the, like the theory of a missing person. If you don't find them in the first forty eight hours, it's true. It the percentage the, the percentage goes down like it's eighty true. percent or whatever that you're gonna find them. Yeah, I feel like photography videography is kind of similar. If you don't start processing the footage and like and videography is like a whole other game, I find it like way more difficult. Oh my it just, god, just yeah, takes I, way more time. That's why I can't even think to get involved with video, just because it's so overwhelming with with photography right now for me. Yeah, and like I've, I, I did a Nova Scotia trip like three years ago, and I still haven't put anything out just because I want to do like I wanted to do like a like a book of across Canada kind of thing. So mm. that's why I'm going across Canada. So you're gonna finish that trip? Yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be in the dead of winter, so I don't even know what it's gonna be like. Eh, you capture other stuff. Yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, part of Canada. I mean, like half you know half the year, the large chunk of the year is winter. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you're Might gonna capture well. what's what's that's true it. there. Yeah. yeah. Are you going on a lot of, like, as part of your journey, um, doing a lot of hikes and spending, like, like you said, you, you, you appreciate less Stroud, for example. Mm -hmm. Do you want to, like, do more wilderness stuff? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I want to use that to get my ass in shape kind of thing. Mm. I've been slacking in the city. Yeah. The city's been killing my vibes. C cities will ruin people. Yeah. <laughs> they, can they, can, they can ruin you, yeah. uh, without a doubt. Yeah. I, I feel very fortunate to um, have stepped into a space where I really value my health. Oh, yeah. And, like, just moving my body. Yeah. I think the farm is, like, a counterbalance for me. Mm -hmm. my, my form of, like, the farm is, like, my version of photography art now. Mm. It's, like, become, Makes like, sense. a dip. Like, yeah, it's, like, I'm, I envision the picture in, like, five, ten years. I'm, like, okay, wow, this mm. tree over here, it's going to create shade right over here. It's going to be yeah. perfect. And then this thing's going to grow under it, and it's going to have that look and color and, like, yeah, there's an excite there's an excitement to uh it's like painting the same canvas over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I would imagine like there's certain photo spots where you go to over and over and over again and you take a different photo mm. at a different time of year that's slightly different but that has a different vibe. Yeah. Um and it just has a different sky or mm. different lighting and you know what I mean? Like something just different every single time. For sure. Yeah. So that's there's there's beauty in the return back to a specific space. Yeah, man. Mm. Speaking of gas bay. I was shocked to see all those. I mean, not shocked, but like, I love Gaspe. Gaspe was what got me into like being like adventurous. I think I used to go there when I was like ten or eleven. My friends' parents and grandparents were from there, and like favorite memories when I was younger. You know, yeah, just like 
four wheeling, three wheeling. Saw a bear. Mm. It's like forget it. Like that's it now. Like you know, it's city life. But no, nah, man, this not for me. And I've been here this long since then. It's fucked up. I'm yeah. I'm literally shocked that you have not. Yeah, that you're not just finding your way. Yeah. I well, think is it is it a fi- like? Do you think it's just like a uh, job opportunity thing, where it's know. like the city just has more more finances Probably. that are Probably. That make sense. Yeah. Probably. I don't want to be like. I guess I'm scared to be, you know, just like unemployed. And I just got, like, I'm now I'm finally living as a photographer. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, like, fuck it up kind of thing. But I feel like if you walked into places and we were like, hey, I'm a professional photographer. Here's my photos. Mm. You guys willing to hire me for 300 bucks to yeah. do this? I thought I probably could. I mean, how much, you, like, how much is one of these, g- you know, Uber gig, Uber Eats gigs paying? Like, they're I mean, realistically. Not I find much. it fascinating, by the way. It's such an interesting photography, like, field. Yeah. But I can't Im- again. B- Not much. Yeah. It's definitely doable. I need to just get my ass out there. That's that's it. It's simple. It's less simple now during COVID. Kind of have to sleuth my way or something. I don't know. if I got, I've heard horror stories of people slashing tires and, like, golden. Um, people come up uh, Alberta slashing tires up in Golden. So I don't wait, know. wait, wait. Why? Because people... Crossing the border, yeah, yeah. So you z- because they see like a Quebec plate in oh Alberta. Yeah. No, no, it's Alberta plate in BC or or vice versa. So I'm wondering, if we see like a Quebec really? plate. Really? That's like a fucking smoking gun. Wow. But I have my name on my car. I, have, I got it wrapped like Steve Walsh photography. I don't know. I don't think anyone's gonna fuck with me, man. I'm not worried about people fucking with your car. No. Plus, you're sleeping in it, so it's like that's it. like. You're you're not gonna be far from your car no. a ton, and even no. if you are, you're on like some trail where nobody's like the, the other persons are there. The other people are there to hike yeah. too. They're not there to I slash tires. I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be alright. Just to gotta get my get everything in order and then go. That it seems like yeah. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done I've never done a cross uh, cross Canada trip in that way. Yeah. But I've definitely like part of me really would love to go to BC. Mm. so cool yeah right now i feel like bc sounds really beautiful i'm like i'm like a toss-up like i keep like oh maybe tulum because it'd be nice and warm it'd be so fun mm. and then there's another piece of me it's like yeah but like then i have to quarantine when i come back yeah and then, and then, and then, it's i'm getting my headspace ready for being cold for a long time yeah like i'm already there like my my like i'm yeah wim hof in it like <laughs> like you, you, you done any wim hof training or breathing exercises i just yeah i did a, i was doing flow training in the, in the beginning just before uh, and after COVID for a bit, but then I just like stopped everything that I was doing. I don't know why. I don't know what came over me. I just like stopped. But yeah, I was doing like the flow training and the breath work and stuff. And it, I pulled my breath for like two minutes and a half, which is like longer than I've ever thought possible for me at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm my headspace is now like you're gonna be cold for a bit. Just deal with it. Learn how to overcome it, and that's it. And I'm excited to do that. I like feel like you're having a, a bit of an awakening right now. I it feels so. like there's like a little like, you know, I, I don't know you super well, but I've, I've mm-hmm. we followed each other or whatever online and, and, and met here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it feels to me like because of this whole slowdown that happened due to the pandemic, it's almost like you had this like kind of cocoon phase. And it feels to me mm-hmm. just when I'm like experiencing mm-hmm. what you're wh- the way you're speaking, that it's like there's this comfort zone that you found yourself in now, even though you had left another yep. comfort zone and then like got into full photography, yep. but it feels like there's a, there's this deeper layer of like you sharing a little bit more of your stories, a little bit more like not just the photos, but now the, yeah. the process of the photos. That's accurate. Yeah. That's accurate for sure. And then just like the willingness to like, just risk it, risk it for the biscuit, yep. just go out there and do it and see what happens. I think that, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like it's, I don't, I don't like calling it a risk. Because I know I'm like I'm confident sure. in my, you know what I mean. But like, yeah. but yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you don't have to call out a risk because it doesn't have to be. You're right. No, I, d- I don't think it's that risky. But it, it doesn't mean that it's not emotionally risky. What no. it means, what I mean by that is like sometimes we see the gap is way bigger than it is, mm-hmm. and it's just like this mental barrier that we're like working our way to get yep. into. And you know, I and we just have sometimes limiting beliefs or stories that are playing out that say I have to do this before I get that. Yeah. Um, you know, I definitely felt I spent an enormous amount of time feeling like a martyr, uh, like, oh, I have to build this house before I can like yeah. be successful as a farmer yeah. or I have to do this well, thing I'm over all that. I'm 
over all that big time. Yeah, yeah. You're just pushing through it all. You're just like, forget yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah. just want to go and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Life's just too short, man. Mm-hmm. Life is too short. Amazing. And you just learn so much when you're on the road. When you're traveling, you learn so much about life, yourself. So, like in the, like I said, when that the Arizona, or you see the Arizona trip, like, I, like I just wish I could do it all the time. Like the feeling I got from those two weeks. You can. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I think you can. Life. I think I think you can if specifically you were to get a van and do that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I also think you can if you're just willing to get a little bit uncomfortable and walk into places that you don't know. Yeah, I and then say. Meet, meet photographers and meet other locals by yeah. following them on mm-hmm. Instagram and just being like, hey, I would love to do profile shots for yeah. you or le- let's go shoot together. Yeah. And, and then they introduce you to people. You know what I mean? Like you're just, just oh, yeah. meeting people. It's really. It's exciting. Yeah. Really, like it, it you know, vibrates you. Mm. Um, what I always said, I always say this to my mother, but I always say I'm unc- um. What do I say? <laughs> Yo, cup, dude. Um, I'm always the most comfortable when I'm uncomfortable kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel the comfiest when I'm, like, when shit's not, like, comfy. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but it's, oh. it's the... I feel it. Yeah, I understand that. I yeah. think I think there's beauty in seeking discomfort. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. Jordan, you wanted to say something? I, w- mm. I was going to give a strong amen to that one, but... Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. I was going to say it's it's interesting because there's so many different ways of doing that like travel photography with uh with a van life that I've seen. So I kind of hop around on different van life videos and I see how different you know what different jobs people have as well as what different vans they've made and things like that and and I've seen so many different like stretches of a oh yeah. photographer um which is just kind of like eye opening cuz yeah. Shit, maybe I could get into photography. For sure you can. I could do it. <laughs> For sure you can, man. I'm going to have some serious competition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, there's a lot more uh, people who are going to invest in photography over time, I think. Great. But but it's weird. It's it, I thought that's I thought that. Yeah. I thought that too. I uh, I mean, look, I I bought a DSLR when DSLRs just became a thing. I remember that. I just bought it right at the I perfect think, moment. I, think I remember when you like bought it. I, I, yeah. I bought one too and it was like um, and when you can film with it and like with the lenses it looks so cool. Yeah, it's like I w- I've got it. My first camera was a 60D, yeah, which was like good enough to do video and then good enough to do photo. Yeah, like it was like right in yeah, between. I and I always buy like I feel like I just have to like this camera right over here is a, a 6D Mark II, for example. It's just the evolution of that same camera, which is like the ba- the balance between price point, yeah, good photography, good videography, yeah. and like internal stabilization in this case. You know what I mean? Whereas like. All these other cameras, I find it's so funny how they make these cameras to be imperfect in mm. some ways. There's always like that one thing that I'm mad about. Yeah. Like, oh, this one is perfect, but it doesn't have stabilization. Mm. Or this one's perfect, but it doesn't have uh, 120 frames uh, FPS yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, And it's hard because I'm asking for a camera that does both. Mm. It's because I love both. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to process more photos, though. I do. I just like feel. I want to. I want to. You know what I want to do? I want to do. The mix between poetry mm-hmm. and photography. I have the perfect recipe. I've Do been trying. I've been yeah for years. I've been saying this to my buddies. Uh, is I want to put all those photos from my Instagram and just scroll through them. Yep. And uh, like have a big projector. Okay. Being like a setting like this is perfect. I like your brick and the wood, like you said, and like the lights. Yeah. And some you know get some some liquor or whatever you fucking want. And just sit there and like have a cabin for like a week and just like pick little certain things from each photo and write words down. And then eventually mm. you'll get somewhere. I think you'll get somewhere. Like just like take a color or take a, a feeling or something. Or and something. just go with it. And, and then just and then take the best. Like so if you do 100 yeah. photos, mm-hmm. you take the best yeah. seven. And then, then, and then that makes the book. That makes the, the little the poem or, or the yeah. song or whatever you want to do with it. But. Oh, that's interesting. That was what I w- always wanted to do, just because that was my way of storytelling, my easy way of storytelling, mm. is photos. But if you were to add the layer just of like shoot a small it amount on of writing. like a projector and just have it up there, and and well, I'm a, I'm a fan try. right now of Atticus, the poet. I've shared a couple things on my Instagram here and there on the Instagram stories. Mm-hmm. I'm just really loving that. What I love about it is he's faceless. Mm. Like nobody knows who. Well, I don't want to say nobody. Some yeah, people, yeah, yeah. I, people I know okay. know him. Um, uh, and I, I, you know, I know I have some inkling, yeah. but, but I love that. That's not the, pu- the purpose of it. Yeah. The purpose of it is like, he's this famous poet who's not famous. It's like Shakespeare. It's like 
the mythos of Shakespeare. Like, yeah. oh, was it multiple writers? There's, like, there's like a layer of that I find so beautiful. I like to check Parti- it out. Particularly because I'm I'm so known for knowing how to make yourself famous in yeah. a way, or yeah, make yeah. yourself known. Yep. That the 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 very act of defiance of my talent yeah. sounds incredibly appealing to me. And yeah. I think it goes back a little bit to the question my brother asked, which is like, will I ever get tired of it? It's like, well, maybe. But I think there's a part of me that's like going to like birth the antichrist of something, like mm-hmm. the anti version of my own yeah. self. And I and it's almost it's almost like I want to disrupt my own self. And I think I've done that a couple of times in my own brand, my own journey. Mm. Where I was like, oh, I'm a f- professional videography. Great. Now I'm done with that. Yeah. Now I'm a professional this. And now I'm done with it's that. And now I'm a professional that. You can that. do that, man. That's a skill. That's like a skill in and of itself. I've hopped a lot. Just to sort of, yeah. Yeah. I've hopped a lot. But I don't like feel I had the same skin. level of mastery, though. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't feel like I have the same level of mastery that I think you have by just like yeah. sticking to it and just getting better and better and better. Like the photos you have are, like the photos I have are cool, but they're, and they're, you're, I can know. I know how to use a camera. I mm. understand the settings, but I'm definitely not like going out for the shot to yeah. get the shot no. that you're gonna get, and and it shows. Like it just it just shows in every single way, mm. um, and that's what I find like so stunning. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see where where else it will take me in, ju- in terms of just like if I were to, were to do video, how how my my videos would turn out, or even just like shedding the skin of photography for a bit and just like living on the road, hiking, and just like you know. How how good of a like adventure I I could be kind of thing. So we'll see. Interesting. We'll see about that. Interesting. The minus forty Alberta cold. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, yeah, there's a part of me. That, that, that there's like a, uh, a a hint of masochism I could hear yeah, in in the tone that you're. A little you're madness, sure. but I like I like a little bit of madness. I thought about that too. I thought about going to Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. Just like make my way all the way to Alaska. I have a friend there who's um, his name is Cody Crockett. He goes. He basically goes on these. Long hikes. Yeah, that's an Alaskan name for sure. Oh, he's he's not even. I don't think he's originally from. I can't. I think he's from Ohio originally. Mm. Something like that. Could be. But um, yeah, or but Iowa. His, his name didn't give him the tr- life choice. He no, no. He, no. He's like <laughs> I call it. He's basically he's um um oh Chuck. He's like a Chuck Norris. Yeah. He's fit as fuck. He's got like that vibe yeah. and that like kind of. He's got like that that southern type charm mm-hmm. kind of vibe, and he. But he's like this. The sweetest, nicest dude who just goes out into nature and does these crazy hikes. Yeah. But he doesn't take any photos or anything. Now, recently, he started recording audio. Amazing. And he made these audio tapes out of the recordings. He's making these, like, subliminal message uh, uh, video, uh, like, audio tracks mm-hmm. where there's, like, there's, like uh, things being said in the background, but your, uh, your waking mind can't hear it, but your ears or your body or your subconscious mm. can. Anyway, this is the theory. Um, and it's very interesting. It's, 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 I think it's a, a primal subliminals yeah. or something. Anyway, it's, it's 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 he makes these audio tapes. And he goes out and he and he and he does that. And wow. he's recording the sounds of like rivers in yeah. Alaska. Mm-hmm. Love love that. Oh yeah. And to do that with like such dedication, I admit like there was a part of me for the longest time I was like, no, oh, it's it's not for me. It's like it yeah. sounds whatever. And it's really just because I was scared. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, it was really just because I'm Alaska like, oh, my God. Scary, it's man. So br- like, it sounds so brutal in some ways. But then there's something so f- liberating and freeing about that. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Well, have you ever seen the show about Alaska? It's about the people who survive up there. It's on the – it was on that geo. Okay. Uh, Life Below Zero, I okay. think it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Great show. Yeah. Wild show. Yeah. And just people, it's yeah, it's just people it's living in the middle of nowhere, and they have to like fly in supplies. Dude, and if they get hit by, a, if they get mauled by a bear, they're like hours away from from a, yeah. any hospital or anything. It's a wild, wild place. I would love that. Yeah, I absolutely. I mean, there's but yes, it's scary as hell. Oh, scary absolutely. As hell. But this is why I want to go and like hang out with somebody like him. Mm-hmm. Is that number one? He knows his way around. And yep. he, you know, he walks around with a bear mace and the gun and all mm-hmm. that stuff because he has to. Yeah. It's just, you know, you encounter the wrong thing in the wrong yep. place. Um, but beyond that, he, so he has the skills. He knows the area. He's been there for long enough to know the different hikes and different mm-hmm. areas. Um, but I also, what I love about him is he's incredibly fit. Mm. And so there's something you like. You have to be. Yeah. If you're doing that. Well, I mean, it's an inevitability, but you got to be fit even before you start doing that stuff. Yeah. There's a part know? of me that feels like all the training I'm doing right now is exactly for this. Yeah. To just like go and do this like 
ultimate feat. Yeah. Where I like disconnect from everything for like well, whatever six months, and, yeah. and all of a sudden I've, I've disappeared. I might grow my beard for six months and just get lost in the wilderness. Starting yeah. to sound like your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I mean like there's something there's something about that um, that I might do at some point. I, I don't I don't think Alaska is going to be this year, mm. but. Well, not not 2020, but I, I don't think it would be this winter mm -hmm. is a better way of saying it. But um, I'm definitely gearing up for something pretty epic. Mm -hmm. I don't kind of fully know what. I feel like I've done a lot of epic shit, though, but... You definitely have. That's I'm, for sure. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm I, trying. You gotta try. I yeah. would encourage starting, you know, big but small. Like, going for a day hike is one thing, but then yeah. going for, like, a three-day hike... When you're camping and maybe you get stuck in the rain, you don't sleep so well, you got a hole in your tent. Yeah. That's like when you start really yes. knowing your like limits of mm -hmm. like when are you gonna lose it. So and, like, I need to go like ten days them. immediately. I have to like oh, just go all in. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go to BC and like drive there and like I just like take all my in time and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm all in too. It's the only way for me to, to do it. Yeah. I feel like I have the like the, the, the resources to do it. You know what it is? I, I think part of the, what's triggering for me is, is actually now the fear of the loss of momentum on other things. Mm. That's like, that's a real thing. There's like a loss of momentum vibe to um, what, it would, what, it, what would it cost me to do that? And like what I mean by that is like, I have a bunch of consulting clients or marketing mm. clients and like all of them depend on me in some way, shape, yeah. or form. And I feel like I'm always kicking that can down the road. Yeah. So there's never like a perfect time where I can just drop them all. Yeah. That's one thing. Then there's then there's like, well, what happens if I like everyone forgets about me, mm -hmm. which is dumb, because if I come back and with oh, amazing no, stories, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. But it but it's still a thing, yeah. you know what I mean? Like and and um, and then I think there's like another part of me that's that's, if I don't do it, like who would I who am I gonna be? You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna regret it. That's the yeah. other half. Of that's it. No, the re you can't do the regret thing. Yeah. Well, no. last year at this time I was on an ayahuasca retreat. That was nice. That was nine days of like Great. disconnected. Where? Which one? In uh, Peru. Peru. I went to Sacred Valley in Peru. Holy smokes! Yeah, that was cool. And oh. then I stayed for three weeks in Peru, and like for, so I, we landed, and then like two days later we were at the Iowa retreat. So we started with the Iowa retreat, and then I stayed for two weeks. Wow. One week with Cody. So him and I actually okay. went around and wow. we went to Machu Picchu. We did all these things. So it was great. Mm -hmm. um, and then another week on fully on my own. How was it? But then the other week on the last. Have to ask. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll share. Uh, on the last week, I, I, I kind of, like, cocooned mm -hmm. a little bit, and I kind of, like, just stayed in the yeah, Airbnb, yeah. Spent, spent a lot of time. But I had a beautiful space. I was over Cusco, and I had this view where I saw the whole city. Oh, it was, like, smokes. at the top of the mountain, yeah, yeah. and I just saw the whole valley. So, yeah, it felt like a cocoon, but at the same time, I was, like, yeah, yeah I was a alone, and I just kind of needed cocoon. Yeah, I needed to cocoon, because <laughs> yeah. cause ayahuasca is one of those things that, like, yeah. for me, it was less powerful than it needed to be in terms of a psychedelic. Like, so I'm a hero dose kind of guy. Like, yeah. I could give me a psychedelic and I'll go into the deep end every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But the, so it wasn't super, super, super psychedelic for me. But the lead up to it, which was I started doing the dieta, which is a, the diet, mm -hmm. uh, 30 days out. I had cut oh, sugar. Wow. I cut coffee. I cut, like, all these vices. Really? And, I, and, yeah, so, and I knew, like, all these, like, it's like I knew the transformation I had to be. Uh. And so that transformation last year, which started roughly you know roughly around the same time i did mm -hmm. this year is now like i I've, i'm turning it into like a i've noticed that this is going to be a pattern every september 21st mm -hmm. i'm going to do some either 40 day challenge that leads me to halloween or 100 day challenge that leads me to the end of the year amazing because that's the, the perfect yep. it's literally the perfect 40 or 100 day challenge yep. um and just yeah just like sh like i'm just going to shift something radical amazing inside of me so it inspired that mm. Like, my ayahuasca journey inspired what I'm living right now yeah. in terms of my body transformation. And so what it learned, what it taught me was uh, the answers are inside of me. That I was, like, externalizing too much. Yeah. And that I was, like, over, over hoping on yeah. things. Like, even the, even the ayahuasca journey itself, I was over hoping that it would give me, like, clarity and answers and, like, a, like a mission. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost like I was like, I was like James like, Bond waiting for the next, the next mission or, or Batman waiting for the next mm -hmm. villain. And, and I didn't have that villain really appear. And if anything, it was felt calm and peaceful. And most of it was like, you're really good at holding, like Mother Aya's message to me was like, you're really good at holding space and you have deep intuition around like how other people are feeling and their experience. And the more that I would like, I think I always felt that way, but I didn't speak it. 
Okay. Or I didn't pe- ask people about it. I just yeah. like held space, like more in like vibe, kind of like a more of a male or guy style, style thing. Like, I know you're hurt, but we're just going to sit here and watch sports and I'm just going to be quiet and you're going to be quiet and we're cool. Right. But I'm still holding space. Like there's still an energy of like, you know, I feel your pain and whatever. Whereas now I'll like the other day, you know, one of my friends, I won't mention his name, but he, he was hurting and we were out there on the, in the field and we were planting garlic and I knew he was hurting. And so I was thinking about it, thinking about it. And then eventually I was just like, Hey, how are you feeling? Like, you know, what's going on? You know, like how, how, how are things with this situation? And, um, and that's like, I would have said uh, uncomfortable for me in other scenarios. It's not because their answers are uncomfortable for me, but it's just like yeah. not the way I normally Absolutely. vibe. Yeah, same and here. now it feels like that's something I want to do more of. That's amazing. I would like to get like that. I'm yeah. Not, I'm not like that at all. I yeah, I feel, but this is what I mean by I feel like you're on the cusp of like a, yeah. a revolution of self in terms of your... I feel it too. Yeah. In ter- mm. Like I could, I can, I don't know. I, I can see, I can sense it from you. Good. Do it. I think you should hit the road. Yeah. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> it's, already happen- it's already happening. What uh, what time code are we at here, Jordan? One hour. Boom. Oh, Somehow I've, I'm like Nostradamus when Not it comes to, to knowing. Or <laughs> <laughs> I just know. I don't, Nostradamus is the wrong terminology. What? Who is somebody who's like really good at knowing the 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 time? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't know who invented the clock. <laughs> <laughs> some, well, some church dude. <laughs> uh, either way, I, I really appreciate you coming out, man. Thank I you really for appreciate me, man. the work that you do. I really appreciate the dedication that you have to showing up to a spot and taking a, a beautiful picture and Thank being you. the patience that it takes to do that. You know, I think a lot of people, we see stock photography sites and we see photos all day and we're going through Instagram yeah. and all that stuff. And we've kind of lost a little bit of the appreciation of the art. But I think the art is not just like what you can do with a camera and the settings and lens, which a lot of people tend to focus on. But I think it's it's really a lifestyle. It's a vibe. It's an it's an energy that you're bringing to the table. Um, I just want to you know shout out to you on that. And so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Go go follow. Go check it out. You know where the links are, ladies and gentlemen. See you in the next episode.